Well, I don't know if winter's ever gonna get here or not, but I figured it's a good time to go ahead and talk about it. What do you need to do to prepare your quail to handle the harshness of winter? That's what we're gonna discuss in today's video. Hey guys, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name's Chris, and if you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, deck, your garage, or even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. You know, like I said in the intro here, I don't know if winter's ever going to get here. It's December 5th, I think, and 70 degrees today. Unheard of. Incredibly windy, but still 70 degrees on December 5th. That's close, if not a record high. And it's been unseasonably warm so far this year, but winter is going to get here eventually. It seems to me like the seasons have been shifting over the last couple of years. Winter's coming a little bit later. Spring's coming a little bit later. So who knows? Maybe we'll get cold weather here in the next week or two. Tonight's supposed to get down to 31, so pretty significant drop in temperature tonight. And then uh, tomorrow, I think the high is only like 41. So big, drastic. I mean, there's a cold front coming. It is going to get cold this week. So it's a good time to talk about winter preparations for your quail. Really, it's pretty simple. Uh, quail are incredibly hardy. They don't need a whole lot to be prepared for winter, and it doesn't matter. You know, I live in Southwest Missouri, so we get cold, but maybe not quite as cold as some of you guys do. Uh, and what I'm talking about here is actual temperature, not wind chill. There'll be a reason for that. I'll tell you why here in just a second. But actual temperature wise, you know, we get down to zero pretty regularly, sometimes negative temperatures, negative five, negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. And we stay there for, you know, a week or two on in. Now I know that's not nearly as cold as some of what you guys run into, depending on what climates you live in, what part of the country, what part of the world you live in. But I do have viewers in other parts of the country that get much, much colder than that. They give me the same feedback. Your quail do fine. You do not need to provide supplemental heat to them. Now this question came up on a live broadcast, oh, last week I think it was, and somebody brought up a really good point that I hadn't thought of before, but one reason you may not want to provide supplemental heat, like a heat lamp to your quail when it gets cold, is that if you um, you can acclimate them to that heat, what's my dog doing? Nothing, okay, sorry, got distracted. You can acclimate them to that heat, and then if the power goes out, they're left without heat. It's better to just let them acclimate to the temperature changes, to the weather changes. You know, quail are originally from well, these, you know, from Asian countries where it does get pretty cold, they live out in the wild. Um, you know, even bobwhite quail that live natively here in the, in the States. Uh, and I know not everybody's watching from the United States, but bobwhite quail native to my state, you know, they make it through the winters just fine without any kind of heat lamps or anything like that. There's no difference for these birds right here. Oh, they've all gone into hiding, haven't they? You can't see them behind me, but anyway. Uh, they can handle the cold temperatures incredibly well. The only thing you really need to do is make sure they have some kind of wind block. And that's what this section of the hutch is for. Now I can open that up here in a second and show you. Most of you guys that are re regular viewers, you've already seen inside there, you know kind of what I'm talking about right there. But this is all closed off, so they have a way to get in there and get out of the wind. It's closed on the top and all four sides and the bottom. It's a big sandbox inside there. So they can get out of there, they get out of the wind, they stay plenty warm enough. It doesn't matter what the temperature is outside, they handle it just fine. I have yet to lose a bird from the cold, unless it was a very young bird. Um, and when I say very young, I'm talking three weeks old, and I didn't acclimate them well to the temperatures before I moved them outside. Once they're fully feathered out, four or five weeks old, as long as you've acclimated them, it's not a huge shock. You don't take them from living in a 100 degree brooder and then you know, swap them outside in 30 degree weather they're gonna do just fine in the cold. The only thing that I need to do really is take down the automatic watering system. Um, I feed my, my quail water with this five gallon bucket here that feeds into some water cups that are in the back. I have not found a way to keep those from freezing. Even if I could keep the water in the, in the uh, water itself from freezing, it still freezes up right there at the point where the water comes out into the cups and they can't get water that way. So I do switch it out. Now I will say, when you go to switch it out, this is what I use for a waterer. This needs to be cleaned up because it was being used as a feeder, but it's the same thing. It's the same concept as what I use for feeders, I use for waterers. And there's a very important reason for this. Um, one is, it, it, you know, it, it holds water just fine. It's just a simple Tupperware style container with some holes cut in the side, just big enough for them to stick their heads in. People often ask me, what size hole is that? I, I don't know, an inch, inch and across, inch and a half across, something like that. I cut them out with my pocket knife, put a lid on it, and fill it up with water up to about where the 
you know, where it doesn't leak out the holes. That's about it. That's all you need to do. Um, I keep two of these. So whenever I come out to switch them out or I switch them out because they freeze, I can't knock the water out of these or the ice out of these because they'll break. Um, so I just take one inside, let it thaw out, and that's the one I use the next time I, I water them. And bring water to them about twice a day. Honestly, what I usually do is I fill it up about halfway, and then when I come out in the evening, I'll fill it up the rest of the way up to the bottom of the holes. They come and get their drink, however much water they want to drink. The next morning, I switch it out with one that's not frozen, let the other one thaw, go through that process all over again. But it is important that you have something that has a lid on it, because quail are kind of stupid. They'll jump inside this thing. If you leave the lid off, They'll jump inside, get in the water, get themselves wet. They'll get the water all kinds of filthy with food crumbs, with feces, with, I mean, everything. It's just, you really need to have a lid on your watering system to keep it from getting nasty and keep the birds safe because you don't want them to get wet and freeze to the bottom of the cage floor or something like that when it's really, really cold out. But that's it. That's all I do for the winter time is switch it out. I have used these rubber crocs. This is what I use for my rabbits. These rubber crocs like this, these work great for the rabbits because I can just knock the ice out of them and the rabbits don't need a lid, they're not going to get inside the water, so it's not that big a deal. But the quail do need, set up something on that so it doesn't blow away and windy out here. Um, the quail do need that lid over the water, but that's really it. That's all you need to do. Let me bring you over and I'll show you the inside of my quail hutch over here just so you can see kind of what I'm talking about, but it's pretty self-explanatory, honestly. All right, so this is... Got birds all over the place. We have to be careful when I open this up. There we go. That is the inside of the quail hutch. Let me bring you in a little closer so you can see it better. All right, so there you can see it now. So we've got the sandbox right here. This is where the birds spend most of their time, summertime and wintertime, honestly. They just really enjoy the sandbox. Um, this is completely sheltered, all four sides and the top. The top's got uh, just six mil plastic. I'll, I'll lift you up here and show you the top of it. Just six mil plastic so that uh, light can get through, uh, but it protects them from the wind, the rain, the snow, all those kinds of things. And there you can probably see the top now. It's just, like I said, just a six mil plastic that I've got stapled to the side. I've got to replace it every, I don't know, three or four years, but it's it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. Nothing, nothing special about that. So I think when most people start raising quail or rabbits for that matter, they that, that's their main concern is what do I do with them in the winter time? Really the hardest part is just watering them. Other than that, it's pretty simple. As long as you have a way for them to get out of the wind. You don't want to leave them exposed to the wind. And that's what I talked about earlier is I'm talking actual temperatures, not wind chill. When the wind chill starts getting in factored into that, if they're out in that and it's just blowing on them constantly, that could be a problem for them for sure. But if they have a way to get out of that wind, they're going to deal with the temperature just fine. They'll huddle together. They'll stay plenty warm enough. I've yet to lose a bird due to the cold weather. So anyway, short, quick video. I've addressed this before, but it is still a common question that I get, and new subscribers probably haven't seen some of those old videos, so I figured I'd go ahead and address it again. It is that time of year, even though, like I said, we're at 70 degrees today. We are, my dog is chasing something. Probably a squirrel, I think. It went up the tree, just making sure he doesn't run off. But <laughs> Sorry, got distracted. Where was I? Um, again, this is just, like I said, it's a topic I've addressed before, but it's still a common question that I get from new subscribers that haven't seen those older videos. And, you know, 70 degrees out this week, it's, it's a kind of been kind of nice, but at the same time, it's not supposed to be 70 degrees in December. We're supposed to be down in the 40s and 50s right now this time of year. And we usually start getting really cold towards the end of December into January and February. Last year, um, you know, it did seem like the season shifted. We had a late, you know, uh, winter came on late. It didn't start getting cold till pretty late in the year. And it stayed cold a lot later in the year. Usually I'm planting tomatoes by May, by Mother's Day. And it was really a couple of weeks, it was almost June before I could get anything in the ground because it, it was just too cold out still. So I don't know if the seasons are shifting, if there is something to maybe global warming and climate change and all those kinds of things. It's not something I worry about because I am a Christian. I trust God has got me covered no matter what's gonna happen out there. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Um, enough about that. We don't wanna make this all political and div you know, divisive. So <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you're doing well and as always, God bless.